make sure this is in focus here. That would be a good idea. Hi, I'm Sean Reimer, and multiple times during last year, I... First off, multiple times last year, I had focusing problems. <laughs> multiple times last year, I tried to kill myself. Uh, so far in 2020, I'm suicide attempt free. So, um, not bad for being 16 days in it. So, I'd, I'd say I'm off to a, a good start. But uh, a year ago, I made a video called I Wanted to Kill Myself with the ed part of wanted in brackets because I, at the time, I, um, I didn't know if I still did at the time. It was very, it was a very tricky choice. Uh, now, I feel like I can cross the, um, or I can, I, not cross out the ed, but uh, highlight it and say I wanted to kill myself because right now I'm... I don't, which is a very, very nice feeling. I figured for Bell Let's Talk this year, I wanted to do a, a follow-up video to kind of react, see how much things have changed, how much things have stayed the same, that, that type of thing. So I got the video loaded up. This is my first proper reaction video with uh, OBS. So hopefully it goes okay. My Mac is making tons of noise, <laughs> so um, it doesn't like it, but... Let's just close out of OBS. Open this up here. Hopefully I can sync everything. Hopefully it goes okay. But let's see. And I'm going to be pausing throughout and talking about things. It's a 15-minute uh, video, so this video is going to be longer. Hopefully I don't copyright strike myself. Hi, I'm Sean Reimer. On January 20th, I wanted to kill myself. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, January 20th was a, a very dark day for me. Um, I remember I was at work, and this was uh, this was a couple days after my birthday. My birthday is actually uh, this Saturday, so it's coming around to that time again. It's, it's a hard time of the year for me, um, especially considering last year. But I, it was a sales day at work, uh, which means it, it's fifty percent off the entire store. Everyone in, everyone and their mother is at uh, that store that I'm working at, and I still do work there. Um, if any of my coworkers are watching this, this was first off hi. Uh, second, this was what happened on January twentieth. So um, it was it was a long day for me, and uh, I was going through uh, some relationship troubles quite a bit um, and I, I wasn't able to, to think clearly and I, I just knew that I, I wanted to die like I, I felt useless there and that I, I wanted to die and I remember that night during my last break I contacted my father who I um, hadn't talked to in a, a very long time because of, of circumstances um, to bring me some of my sister's um, antidepressants because that's that's how bad it was and he was like you know what how wh why don't I just take you to the hospital because um, and it was always sort of a joke as a kid like you know we, we'd say we want to kill ourselves and my parents would take it very very seriously and be like we're gonna take you to the hospital and it was sort of a, a threat but this time it was like yeah I, I needed to go to the hospital so I went uh, spent six hours in the emergency room and eventually we got this psychologist and for some reason I snapped at him and had this psychotic break at him and I feel bad for, for doing that but I wasn't in my right mind then like I, it was a complete out of body experience but, uh, very very rough day January 20th um, and those days kept getting harder good way to start a video yeah it's amazing how much I've changed. Like, um, I'm wearing glasses now, and then I've got kind of a, it's hard to see, but kind of sort of a beard. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, and then the, the hair, this is this is kind of my go-to look now. Um, I was messier back then. I look like MacGyver. 
<laughs> I look like, and then clean shaven. It's it's weird to see how much I've changed in one year. A lot. So I'm planning on uploading this video on Bell Let's Talk for those. I'm not wearing the same shirt, by the way. This is the a different sure shirt. It's a Canada only thing. It might be a, something that's all over the world, but it's a day in which it's pretty much what it sounds like. We talk. We talk about mental illness and uh, raise awareness for it. And I've been really silent about my mental illnesses because I never found a way to express them. And this year, I, I figured I'd, I'd have to do something. But At this point, I wasn't actually officially diagnosed with anything. Um, eventually, during the spring, I went to a psychiatrist. Uh, for those who are getting into mental health, always go to a psychiatrist. Don't go to a, a family doctor because, uh, don't get me wrong, I love my family doctor. Um, he, he's awesome, but he they, they just are not equipped to, to deal with this kind of thing. They, they'll give you as many drugs as you can stomach, basically. Um, I was on uh, Ciprolex, Pristique, um, Effexor. Effects are messed me up and gave me bipolar side effects, which made me think I was bipolar, so I went on Topamex, and that's when my eyes got screwed up. Uh, so, it's it's even hard to be in this lighting right now, but I, I need to light something for the video. Um, but with the psychiatrist that I went to, um, they diagnosed me with major depressive disorder and uh, general anxiety disorder, or might be the other way around, major anxiety or general depression, I don't know. But uh, then they gave me two prescriptions that I've been on to this day and that have worked very, very well. So I'm very, very fortunate that I found something that works for me. Um, it's gotten out of hand at this point for me. Yeah. I'm going to take you way back to the start of, of my life. So when I was two and a half, three, something like that, I was diagnosed with PDD NOS, which stands for Pervasive Developmental Disorder, not otherwise specified, I believe. Yeah. Uh, in short, I had a form of autism in which some symptoms were severe and then others weren't existent. So they didn't know how to properly diagnose me. So I think I've gained weight. They put me. Hmm. Uh, from age three to age five. I would come home from a special needs preschool. Uh, I'd go down to my basement and uh, I'd partake in uh, therapy to help me behave like a normal human being, typical autism child therapy, I, I guess. I'm, the, the company who did it no longer exists, so I, I can't confirm anything. In a way, that therapy was helpful for me because it, you know, obviously helped me behave like a normal human being. But at the time, I didn't know what was going on. I thought every child went through stuff like this. It's interesting I say that um, because now with this medication, I feel like I, I've i reached about as normal as I can be. Like before, I was, I was anxious all the time, but that was, that was life. Like, I thought everyone felt that way, and, you know, the depression came in, and I thought everyone felt that way. But now um, now that I'm on these prescriptions, uh, Remeron and Abilify, those are the two that I'm on. Uh, now that I'm on those, it, uh, yeah, I, I'd say it's the most normal I've, I've ever felt. Like, I, I feel like this is how the majority of people feel, so... Um, and it's, it's a blessing and a curse, because it, it takes away some of my unique qualities, I feel. I, I can't remember things as much as I, I used to be able to, and I'm, I'm clumsier, and so uh, it, it's a catch-22. Uh, and it's, it, it traumatized me. It really did. And it set something in my mind where I'd always have to look for validation in other people instead yeah. of myself. Because, you know, the, the only way I felt like I was making any kind of progress is when those people said I was making progress, when those people 
those therapists said I was doing a good job. Yeah. So after that, they took me out of that program early because they, um, my parents wanted me to uh, start elementary, and in, in no way do I blame my my parents for uh, things that happened. Odd. I still don't. That's that's one thing that hasn't changed. I don't blame my parents whatsoever. Um, you know, there's times I'll get angry angry at my my dad and my mom and that those times have happened this year. I'll say things that, um, just to try and get an advantage in the, the argument. That that's the sole purpose of it. So, um, I I forgive my parents because that's the first key to forgiving yourself was a fairly new thing at the time uh, and resources were still fairly scarce and they were trying to I'm tired to <laughs> one big uh, thing so I, I don't blame them they they took the steps that they want to take to make me feel better or to make me better uh, I struggled a lot in, in elementary school not so much with academics but with uh, socialization a lot of the time. I still didn't do. know how to talk to people. I didn't even talk until I was four years old. And now you can't shut me up. So, that's <laughs> uh, sorry, it's a trip down memory lane. It is. Keep going, man. You got it. So, I, I struggled a lot in, in that department. I frequently have tantrums. I was, uh, my hearing is very sensitive. So, whenever there was a fire drill, those were the worst days. I hate fire drills. I still fire hate fire drills. They're awful. Actually, I had one at my work. I, uh, I learned of my diagnosis and I took some personal steps to try and uh, function myself and become self-aware of certain tics I had. That's when my parents got divorced. And, and I don't blame my parents for the divorce. I don't, you know, um... My, my grandparents, if you're watching this, I know that you've been, I know um, on, on my mom's side, my grandparents, I don't know if uh, my, my grandma on my dad's side watches these, but um, my grandma on my mom's side, I know you blame my mom for the divorce. I know you blame your daughter. Please stop. Please, for the love of God, stop, because it is driving us bananas. And I know you are. So don't try and cover it up. I know you're I know you're saying that kind of stuff. So I'd rather have them apart and be functional away from each other than be pushing each other down the stairs because that's what happened with my um uh my grandpa and his his wife. So never knew my grandfather on my dad's side. Never. It drastically affected me. I th th that's when I started to get depression. Like that's when I very vividly remember that I became depressed, and that's the scary part. Is at this point in my life, I didn't know what real depression was. I thought depression was sadness, like a very, very deep sadness. It isn't, because um, through uh, spring and summer of this year, um, starting the new prescriptions, I became numb. I wasn't able to feel anything. I wasn't able to get my emotions out, which is very, very scary. And you just want to scream, but you can't. Uh, that's depression where you can't feel anything. That's what depression really is. So, um, I mean, at the time, I, I don't blame myself for, for not knowing that. Cause, you know, he hasn't experienced that yet. But uh, I never, ever want to experience that again. It's awful. Like, that's also why I, I quit acting. Because I, I kept trying to emotionally tap myself in and try and make myself feel things all the time. And, um, no, I... I it, it just it put too much stress on myself and maybe caused myself to, to self harm. So. Sense that I I became cynical. 
uh, my mom, she found a, uh, a boyfriend from Mexico, came over here, and he was, he was abusive. He was abusive uh, verbally towards her, uh, and in some sense physically, not sexually though, thank God. Jose, if you're watching this, I hope you fucking die. Uh, physically and verbally abusive to um, my sister. I remember uh, one day he dragged her up the stairs uh, with her head on the carpet, so it was bouncing all the way up the stairs. The only person he seemed to really like was me. So one night there was, there was a huge fight, um, lots, of, lots of shouting, uh, and I, I got sent home that night to my, to my dad's place to, so my mom could figure stuff out eventually. They, uh, they broke up. It was very ugly. And he, uh, he ended up, I think, taking some stuff of hers that she never got back. So that was another thing. Uh, I was constantly looking for his validation. That it's also why I want to move out. Because this house, it's... Um, this is my mom's place. Um, I, I did have my own place in Vancouver for a little while, and then I moved back here. Um, I was hoping to stay in my dad's old place more, but he... Um, he, he sold it, and that's, that's what created the rift between me and my father. Um, but uh, I still see him sometimes. Jose, I mean. Uh, took time to really care for myself and to care for my mom, for sure. And I, I feel a lot of guilt for that. Eventually, yeah. though, in junior high, I found uh, I found theater. Yeah. I found acting, and I found that there was a lot of people very similar to me, and that I I hated myself. But with acting, I could become any character that I wanted to be. I could become a, a psycho killer that was stabbing people's eyes out, so she could look for a cuckoo bird. I could be uh, I, I could become a secret agent infiltrating a girl's slumber party in a high school. That was a fun play. Uh, yeah. I could be Batman and Sherlock and anything I wanted. I could write my own stuff. I could write my own characters. And I, I could get a camera and I could do this. And I actually wrote a, a musical this year, and I'm I'm pretty proud of it. If uh, anyone's familiar with uh, My Chemical Romance, is the Black Parade. I took the music from that and made it into a musical. So, uh, yeah, it, it's not perfect, and you know, I'd I'd like to rewrite it and tweak some stuff. But m maybe one day, I can see it come to life. That'll be that'll be wicked. You know, take a break from being me for a while. But deep down, uh, and it's a thing many actors go through, and it, you know, it, it's something that's going to be ingrained into me. Actors constantly look for a validation of an audience. So you can see why this job was pretty ideal for, for my situation. Yeah. So I decided to pursue that. I... Um, went to Vancouver to a, an acting school and I wonder if he'll say it. I, I almost didn't survive up there. It was it was bad. And I don't think he knows at the one time what happened. Because I you know, I, I didn't take care of myself mentally. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't I, I I'm talking to him like he's he's a he, but he's me. That, that's strange. But um he didn't, I didn't know at the time that uh, that school no longer exists. So my diploma doesn't mean anything coming from there because it, it's, it's a new school now. It's called the Vancouver Acting School, but uh, it doesn't exist. So uh, honestly, there's days where I've been tempted to light that diploma on fire. Take care of myself physically either. I was eating a lot. I was... Uh, you were eating a lot? Eat. Big into oh my god, you stick. Trying to try and cope with my feelings because every memory in an acting school keeps getting brought up. 
so you can experiment with different with different parallels, uh, things like that. Sorry, I'm really really tired. And so every day I was going home with scads that were healed off, like mentally, uh, and memories that I wouldn't let heal. I couldn't come back into that. So uh, I left Vancouver. I ruined quite a few relationships I had there. If anyone from my my school in Vancouver is watching this, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I uh, I made amends with um, some people in Vancouver. They don't have any hard feelings. They're going through life just like me. So. Uh, it was a bit naive of me to think that I screwed everything up. I didn't. Um, I, I put that in, in a lot of my, my poetry as well, that I screwed it up. I, I didn't. The way I see it, you know, Vancouver was one road, and then there was the road least taken, the road that was more interesting, the road which I could be selfish, and I took that road. And I don't regret it at all. I'm sorry to my to my class, uh, Holden. For I, I feel like I let you guys down. You didn't, man. I'm sorry to you. Really didn't. My former roommate, Andrew. I'm sorry to all my instructors. Andrew is a piece of shit. I I don't know why I apologized to him. He's a piece of shit. You put a lot of time into making my thing better. I do apologize for, to my instructors and whatnot, but frankly. Considering the stuff the school was going through with the Michael Coleman incident, uh, those watching this that aren't familiar with that incident, I'm not going to go into it, but um, you had no right to take any more money from me. No right. After everything that went went on. Um, so don't try and advertise your school to me anymore. I'm not going back. So considering I was looking for validation of other people, I came back home to my girlfriend. She's probably watching this right now. Uh, She's probably watching this right now. Um, here, I'll let him talk a little bit and then I'll say my piece. My ex now. Yeah. It's weird to say because we're, we're still good friends. It's just... That hurts. Uh, oh, God. Uh, because I haven't talked to her since February. I don't know if I want to. Like, I... I don't know. Uh, a lot of things happened in our relationship to, to flounder that. Or founder, or whatever the word is. There, I still don't um, know. My dad, a week after I got back, decided to to move to make himself happier, to make his fiance happier, move to Strathmore. And so I lost my childhood house, and I didn't talk to him for a long time after that. Just want to, I, w I want to talk about Sonia. I um yeah, it's um. I'm going to talk about it like you're here, watching this, because who knows, you might be. I, I don't know if you still watch this channel, but, um, I, first off, I saw you in June, um, when you were, you were at the store. Uh, I know you were in my line, and then you, um, got moved to the, the other line right as you were about to get up to the front, so we never, we never talked. Um... I want to be angrier than I am. Like, I, I, I want to be like, oh, you were, you know, you were talking to another guy and, and all that, and you were, you know, thinking about cheating, and that should have been a, a red flag uh, when you, you cheated on cheated with me on another guy and uh, on, on Mark and whatnot. I, I want to be like that, and to an extent I am. But that's the... It's the bit of me that's angry. There's there's so many emotions. Um, but I know you're young, and I know you're figuring stuff out too. And 
I forgive you. There's days I don't want to forgive you, but I deep down I do forgive you. If you're watching this, can you, I don't know, comment something, um, just like a, an LOL or, or something. I'll probably forget that I even said LOL, and then you'll reply LOL, and I'll be pissed off. But, okay, don't say LOL. Um, just say what's on your mind. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's continue. Uh, we've reestablished contact now, but that's because uh, recently I was in the hospital. Yeah, this was the January 20th. And it incident. started with uh, my my ex telling me she no longer had strong feelings for me. And I felt like all of the back stuff, the, the autism therapy, the divorce, uh, my mom's abusive boyfriend, the acting school, Vancouver, and all the insecurities I have about my future just collapsed. So... January 20th, I, I went to work. I'm a sales clerk at a value village or savers or whatever you call it. I actually went into Long more detail in day. this video. Thing. And on my, uh, I, was, I was cleaning the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I was just like, I could kill myself right now. I have a box cutter. I could slip my wrists in the, the fucking bathroom. It would be, you know, it was the only thing that gave me comfort. Once you've hit the point Once you've hit suicide that where you're not scared of it anymore, that's where you have to get help. Please get help. If you reach that point, like, that, that that's the thing. Like, if it's one thing if you're absolutely terrified of, of doing it, but then if it's the only thing that's keeping you comfort in your mind, please get help. Like, um, uh, the Canada Suicide Hotline is good. Um, the Crisis Center, mm, not not so much. They hung up on me one time, and and well, they, I hung up on them because they told me, "Oh, gee, that sucks." Like really, um, honestly, kids' help phone is really good. Uh, even if you're not a kid, like there's times I've called it this year and have been like, I I just I, I need an emotional pick me up. Like I you know I um because I I haven't there there's a lot of things that that still you know. Um, I, I won't say make me depressed because I know what depression really is now, but they make me sad. Uh, I still don't have a, a meaningful job or career path figured out. I still haven't found anyone new um, to replace Sonia or to, you know, I haven't found someone better yet. Uh, I haven't had sex in a year. Honestly, yeah, it's little things like that. So, but you know, and I, I think there's a lot of things I, do, I've accomplished this year that I should be proud of, or last year that I should be proud of. So, so I reached out to to my dad. Uh, he took me to the hospital. We. We sat there for like five hours only for a counselor to come in saying, you know, I can admit you or, uh, and, and like work on coping solutions or you can go home. And it sent me into an out of my mind panic attack. Yeah. So that's and what I've I was referencing. Like I've, I said things to him I don't remember. I... It was an out-of-body experience, mm -hmm. and that's you know, that's when I knew I, I was sick. I was really, really sick. It's hard. It's you know I I want to be the, the the strong person, but it uh, it just finally cracked. I want to be the strong person. I am a strong person. I am absolutely a strong person.
eventually I found a, a walk-in therapist. They threatened to call the cops if I if I did something, so I'm not seeing them anymore. Plus, they were all the way down uh, south so near my I've accent. decided That's to cool. take upon finding myself and trying to find ways to love myself. I'm on uh, I'm on antidepressants right now. Trial run, I can actually get them. So this is what I'm on: 30 milligrams. Uh, I'm still working on taking the full 30. That yeah, stuff's I awful. Knows me this much because of the thoughts I was having. Yeah, it's terrible. And probably more importantly, I've decided to again find ways to love myself. Um, I plan on auditioning for a theater in uh, in Calgary Storybook Theater. That didn't happen because I I need to find the love in that again. And I broke up with my girlfriend, which. It's a very, it's a very hard thing. But she was my emotional support uh, for for two years. I wrote an entire screenplay dedicated to her for my class. I did. She was so useful to me because she got me out of the house and out of my my bubble, and properly introduced me to the outside world, which I've been scared of for so long. I miss you. I I really, really miss you. There's times it feels like a distant memory when you were you were in my life and there's times where it feels like only yesterday. That's why I don't want my birthday to happen. I I really don't. I'm, I'm trying to be focused on, on making this birthday even better than last year. Because, um, you, you know what? It was crap last year. It was absolute crap. Absolute crap. Like, what, what you did... Now, though, I want to break free. A little bit of clean, yeah. So, if you're watching this, I'll always love you in some way or another. Still do. Just gotta love myself right now. Yeah. And some of you might be feeling the same way. And... I want to be of some kind of assistance to you. I want to I want to help you like I'm helping myself. So, probably put it right here. There's my phone number. I don't care about roaming or anything like that. I can pay that off. If you need to talk to to, to me, that number still applies. So, if if you need to reach out Uh, to anyone call that text it do, do something uh, comment on on this video do whatever you need to do okay I'm here we're gonna get through this together right on man because we need to talk about this this is the only way this is gonna get better and this is the only way I'm gonna get better I think that's the end. Yeah, that's the end. <sighs> uh, so I, I might as well do a, a little update. Um, a little recap of uh, last year. So, yes, I, I went to the hospital more times for more suicidal attacks and uh, attempts. Um, the most recent of which was at the end of September, so I've, I've been doing pretty good so far. Uh, I'm learning how to play the guitar, so, and it's a great therapy tool, it's fantastic, so, 
Um, I, I enjoy doing that. Um, I went on a vacation by myself. Um, that was the vacation vlog. I, I don't like that vlog very much. I, that's why the, the rest of the vacation I didn't vlog, because I was like, I, I want to properly soak this all in. So I did that. I'm proud of myself for that. Uh, I've got another vacation coming up, so I feel like I, 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 I earned it. I really earned it. Um, and I've been um, trying to make more friends, reestablish some friendships, apologize to some people that deserve to be apologized to. And in, uh, and 2020 is going to be even better. 2020 is going to be so much better than 2019. 2019 can suck it. 20, 2019 was awful. 2020 is going to be wonderful. I think that's a good place to end it. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, please comment something. Well, say hi. Something. Um, yeah, I'm Sean Reimer. Have a wonderful night. Actually, I should end this at the same time. That'd be the better thing to do.